Joining us now to talk about your health is Dr. Irina Bird, Chief of Women's Health at the University of Maryland Medical Center and Chair of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Health at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. It is truly my pleasure. Tell us about your work and, and your main area of focus there. So for many years, for over 20 years, uh, I, as a maternal fetal medicine physician scientist, have um, focused on causes of preterm birth. Uh, we've done a lot of bench work, translational work on preterm birth, but what I'm realizing in, you know, and, and this is a sober realization, that there's a lot more to preterm birth. And that is clear as I became the chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology here in West Baltimore at University of Maryland. What we see in Baltimore is um, really high rates of, of, of preterm birth. Nationally, we are, you know, nationally we're at 10.7% uh, preterm birth rate. Maryland is not doing that hot overall as a state. Uh, we received a grade of D plus last year uh, for 2022. We did improve to uh, to a, a C minus this year for 2023 scorecard for March of Dimes. But for Blacks, we're not doing that well. The rates actually grew from 13% to 13.1%. So that's far from the national or even Maryland's marks. You've uh, practiced medicine. You trained uh, in the New York City area, the Philadelphia area. Are, are these problems um, universal? And for that matter, are, are there similar issues in, in rural areas that may have less access to, to good care? That's an excellent point, uh, Jeff, uh, because where we are practicing here is similar sometimes to the areas in New York and, and Philadelphia. West Baltimore, right behind me, uh, zip codes 21216, 21217, 21223, and 21229, historically been uh, called red line districts, and they are separated from our hospital by MLK Boulevard. Very simple, similar to other uh, cities, actually, that uh, have MLK. Boulevard. There's a whole video on that folks should watch uh, for these historically red, red line districts. And we truly need to help the folks in those areas. Um, there are um, considerable barriers to care. Well, talk about some of those barriers, because, um, you know, you can get across uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard there. It's, it's not that wide. So, I mean, access to the hospital, nobody's really that far away, are they? That's 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 the key point here. So when we're talking about um, folks in in those zip codes, and they're like in the butterfly area around us here, um, what we are actually uh, talking about is folks who forty percent of them have food insecurities. They don't own a car. Majority of them don't own a car. Um, there is um, high levels of unemployment. Um, there is, of course, substance abuse. Um, but truly, the in order for them to come here, um, they have childcare issues, transportation issues, and there are issues associated with structural racism and health literacy. Um, we really need to educate our own providers to take care of our um, underserved population so they recognize themselves in our faces, so they understand what we tell them, um, and we take care of them the way they want to be taken care of, not that the way I want to be taken care of, because that my way probably may not be the way that they want to be taken care of. So knowing what you do about the problem and, and the importance of that problem, because a preterm baby, I mean, the huge advances in uh, NICU uh, care, but still it, it can, uh, at a minimum, get somebody's life started on the wrong foot. So given what you know about it, what, what is the University of Maryland Medical Center doing to address the problem? So as, as you probably um, heard, our medical center is actually America, well, among America's best uh, maternity care hospitals but with five ribbons. And that's determined by the rankings determined by patients, um, um, questionnaires and experiences, as well as hospital quality markers. We have all possible resources within the hospital to take care of these of these folks. 
right? We need to get them here, right? We need to educate them. And we truly cannot do this without subsidies from the state. Um, we don't have insurance that covers it. And, um, you know, as much as I, I would love to do that, we don't have resources at this time. We know that there is a critical need because it's not only about pre prematurity and prematurity related morbidity that we could take care of here in in our NICU, right? But it also translates into infant mortality. Our infant mortality in this area is super high. As a mother of two children, I have to tell you, you don't have to go to another country to see the infant mortality and the numbers are really sober. Um I, I don't think this is like new information, but but what what should expectant parents, um, maybe expecting grandparents who can be involved in the situation, what should they know about getting this this new life started on the right foot? It's about nutrition. What else is it about? Well, it's about getting two patients. And we need more funds to get to patients. For example, they need to have childcare. They need to have uh, transportation meets to get here. Clearly, you know, when they get to the hospital, and a lot of them are wage workers, right? So when they go to the hospital for a visit, sometimes it's a two-hour ordeal to get here. So they're losing two hours of their wage works, right? So we need to create a system of, and we actually, we're working on this big grant that we're submitting to Maryland, um, uh, Maryland uh, State to create the funds available for these folks to utilize Lyft, uh, which is service to get to the hospital, to have care coordinators that keep in touch with folks who are at high risk and really can come either because of child care, their, you know, their work, et cetera. But they need to be coming for regular visits. So we identify a problem and we take care of them in a timely manner. So we know that number of visits with us correlates to better health. So the more they come, the better we were able to take care of their problems, such as hypertension, diabetes, you know, manage their diet and, and, and such so that we could deliver them um, as close to full term as possible. I, I would guess there's a, a wide variety of ways that, that uh, um, people pay for uh, maternal care. I mean, you would have some people on Medicaid. You may have some people with commercial insurance, other forms of uh, assistance. What you're saying is that they're they're not going to cover the things um, like transportation to the appointment that would would make a difference in getting people there for more regular prenatal care. Jeff, even more, we need to give these folks food also during their pregnancies. Even though they live in Baltimore, there are health deserts out there in a way that they they have food desert. Um, the closest place where they could buy, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables, it may be far. And again, not being not having access to um, to a vehicle, and you know, having childcare issues sometimes provides um, a lot of barriers to this. So we totally need to be rethinking healthcare for our vulnerable population. We truly owe it to them. We have the resources to take care of them at the hospital. We have to bring resources to them or we have to bring the patients to us. But we have to be rethinking about how we take care of our patients. It's not the model, oh, I have insurance, I could get the best care. There are other issues that we need to be thinking about here. You're obviously passionate about, about this very important um, area, and you've done a lot of research. I know you've published over 100 uh, research papers. What, what's the, the big focus of your research right now? So what I study is how, um, how inflammation, intrauterine inflammation, impacts fetal brain development. So, And we do know that um, such, um, such problems as stress, um, and and perception of structural racism that exists uh, is as a stressful um, marker. And that stress converts into biological issues such as inflammation within mom, and that leads to preterm birth. 
So by taking away the stress, uh, providing the best possible health care, meaning the folks who come here see themselves and trust. We need to also talk about health literacy and educate our patients about what is said in, in a language that they could understand. Uh, we need to have the same language. And as a um, you know, as a foreign language speaker myself, um, I could tell you that's super important. That perception and understanding is super, super important. Doctor, before we go, tell us what um, what you're doing right now in, in the community on this issue. Wonderful question. You know, we already have a wonderful uh, setup called Be More for Healthy Babies. We're working with School of Social Work, pediatricians, obstetricians, and on a smaller scale, in those zip codes, we are uh, we are bringing to them the services such as Lyft, uh, child care, and also a lot of classes on health literacy and pairing on the small scale folks with the care coordinators. Uh, we also provide um, healthy food options on our Midtown campus and such, so local folks could come and shop for produce. Those produce markets are set up um, every week. So we, we do put the best foot forward. We need just more, um, more availability of that, um, and not just on a smaller scale, but take it to the larger scale. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 